chapter 40. Christ bringeth to pass the resurrection of all men. The righteous dead go to paradise, and the wicked to outer darkness, to await the day of the resurrection. All things shall be restored to their proper and perfect frame in the resurrection. Now, my son, here is somewhat more I would say unto thee. For I perceive that thy mind is worried concerning the resurrection of the dead. Behold, I say unto you, that there is no resurrection, nor I would say, in other words, that this mortal does not put on immortality, this corruption does not put on incorruption, until after the coming of Christ. Behold, he bringeth to pass the resurrection of the dead. But behold, my son, the resurrection is not yet. Now I unfold unto you a mystery. Nevertheless, there are many mysteries which are kept, that no one knoweth them save God himself. But I show unto you one thing which I have inquired diligently of God that I might know, that is, concerning the resurrection. Behold, there is a time appointed that all shall come forth from the dead. Now when this time cometh, no one knows, but God knoweth the time which is appointed. Now whether there shall be one time, or a second time, or a third time that men shall come forth from the dead, it mattereth not, for God knoweth all these things. And it sufficeth me to know that this is the case, that there is a time appointed that all shall rise from the dead. Now there must needs be a space betwixt the time of death and the time of the resurrection. And now I would inquire what becometh of the souls of men from this time of death to the time appointed for the resurrection. Now whether there is more than one time appointed for men to rise, it mattereth not. For all do not die at once, and this mattereth not. All is as one day with God, and time only is measured unto men. Therefore there is a time appointed unto men that they shall rise from the dead. And there is a space between the time of death and the resurrection. And now concerning this space of time, what becometh of the souls of men is the thing which I have inquired diligently of the Lord to know. And this is the thing of which I do know. And when the time cometh when all shall rise, then shall they know that God knoweth all the times which are appointed unto man. Now concerning the state of the soul between death and the resurrection, behold, it has been made known unto me by an angel, that the spirits of all men, as soon as they are departed from this mortal body, yea, the spirits of all men, whether they be good or evil, are taken home to that God who gave them life. And then shall it come to pass that the spirits of those who are righteous are received into a state of happiness, which is called paradise, a state of rest, a state of peace, where they shall rest from all their troubles and from all care and sorrow. And then shall it come to pass that the spirits of the wicked, yea, who are evil, for behold, they have no part nor portion of the Spirit of the Lord, for behold, they chose evil works rather than good, Therefore the spirit of the devil did enter into them and take possession of their house. And these shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth, and this because of their own iniquity being led captive by the will of the devil. Now this is the state of the souls of the wicked, yea, in darkness, and a state of awful, fearful looking for the fiery indignation of the wrath of God upon them. Thus they remain in this state, as well as the righteous in paradise, until the time of their resurrection. Now there are some that have understood that this state of happiness and this state of misery of the soul before the resurrection was a first resurrection. Yea, I admit, it may be termed a resurrection, the raising of the spirit or the soul, and their consignation to happiness or misery according to the words which have been spoken. And behold again, it hath been spoken, that there is a first resurrection, a resurrection of all those who have been, or who are, or who shall be, down to the resurrection of Christ from the dead. Now we do not suppose that this first resurrection, which is spoken of in this manner, can be the resurrection of the souls and their consignation to happiness or misery. Ye cannot suppose that this is what it meaneth. Behold, I say unto you, Nay, but it meaneth the reuniting of the soul with the body of those from the days of Adam down to the resurrection of Christ. Now whether the souls and the bodies of those of whom has been spoken shall all be reunited at once, the wicked as well as the righteous, I do not say. Let it suffice that I say that they all come forth, or in other words, their resurrection cometh to pass before the resurrection of those who die after the resurrection of Christ. Now, my son, I do not say that their resurrection cometh at the resurrection of Christ. But behold, I give it as my opinion, 
that the souls and the bodies are reunited of the righteous at the resurrection of Christ and His ascension into heaven. But whether it be at His resurrection or after, I do not say. But this much I say, that there is a space between death and the resurrection of the body, and a state of the soul in happiness or in misery until the time which is appointed of God that the dead shall come forth, and be reunited both soul and body, and be brought to stand before God, and be judged according to their works. Yea, this bringeth about the restoration of those things of which has been spoken by the mouths of the prophets. The soul shall be restored to the body, and the body to the soul. Yea, and every limb and joint shall be restored to its body. Yea, even a hair of the head shall not be lost. But all things shall be restored to their proper and perfect frame. And now, my son, this is the restoration of which has been spoken by the mouths of the prophets. And then shall the righteous shine forth in the kingdom of God. But behold, an awful death cometh upon the wicked. For they die as to things pertaining to things of righteousness. For they are unclean, and no unclean thing can inherit the kingdom of God. But they are cast out and consigned to partake of the fruits of their labors or their works which have been evil and they drink the dregs of a bitter cup.